Welcome to Travel America RV Center of Comac. This video is an instructional on how you're going to function with your motorhome while you're out on your vacation. Hopefully it's helpful and you have a lot of key points that you can understand if there's anything you don't understand. In your binder you will find my cell phone number or the office contact and I'd be more than happy to help you guys. There's a few things I want to bring to your attention before we get started. Number one, you want to make sure that you put that app on your phone called Copilot. That Copilot app is going to be simply for a motorhome for travel. Do not use Google Maps, do not use Waze. Those apps will not keep you off the parkways and out of tunnels that do not allow you to go through because of propane. And if you need help with the um, specifications, make sure that your app is on before you pick up your motorhome and I can help you with that. Again, no parkways. The other thing I want to bring to your attention is that your generator will not function on a corner tank of gas. So if you're heading to an event like Penn State or NASCAR, make sure you fill up your motorhome gas tank before you get into that enclosed arena because they will not let you back out to fill your gas and you need at least to be out of full. It burns about a gallon every five hours as far as your generator is concerned. So you want to make sure you only use your generator when you need it. The other key point I want to bring to your attention is that when we're dry camping, well, what does that mean? Dry camping is not hooked up to electric at all, such as NASCAR, Dover, Hither Hills. So you want to make sure you make a habit of uh, running your generator for at least seven to eight hours during the day. So this way that keeps your coach batteries charged. Um, you also have in your motorhome, you'll notice um, we always have detectors. We got smoke, propane, and carbon monoxide. So we're definitely sending you out with the best product out there and also with all the safety precautions covered so that you guys can enjoy your vacation or whatever it is you're doing and hitting that road with safety. You'll notice on this video that there's going to be certain type of timed key boxes for different headings. Um, so if you guys have done this before and you just need to brush up on a certain area such as sewage or components, then just find that noted um, box and then just watch that portion of the video. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Have a great time. Hey everybody, today we're going to review the motorhome rental um, do's and don'ts on a 32 foot sun seeker with bunk beds. Let's get started. You're going to notice your monitor, pa monitor panel is here. We control the slide out room, which is the sofa slide. You want to make sure that you're either plugged in or the generator's on before moving that slide. Also, nobody's sitting on the furniture. It is weighted, so it is not a um, toy. Is your slide out rooms will not function with the engine running. You'll notice I put a little notation here on a sticker to remind you to make sure that the engine is off before moving these rooms. We want to start the generator from here, so you're going to prime the generator first. You're going to wait until the red light appears, then you're going to start her up. You're going to hold it and hold it until she starts completely. The longer you prime, the quicker she starts. Now you're going to find after you start a motorhome generator, it's going to take 40 seconds for the microwave light to come on. Without the microwave light on, you do not have electric, so wait that full 40 seconds. Most motorhomes you'll hear a beep and then you'll see a light. When we plug in at the campground, you see a light automatically on the microwave, so make it a habit. The lights on your ceilings are LEDs off the battery. They are not telling you that you have electric. So you wanna make sure, if you notice on the microwave, you got two green dots, so that means that you're now on. When you're done using the generator, you could shut it off from here, and you can also use your generator while you're traveling. I'm not suggesting that you use your generator for 12, 15 hours straight. It's, it is a machine and it will get hot and it may shut off for safety purposes. So if you're driving along and you want to put the central air on, then you can run the generator. It runs off the main fuel tank. Caught a tank of gas, it shuts off. It's a safety. They don't want you sleeping with the generator on for the air and find out that you have no gas to drive in the morning. So it always cuts off at a quarter. So make sure any events you're going to, Penn State, Dover, NASCAR, anything that's not gonna have electric hookups that you're gonna use your generator, make sure your gas gauge is full before going into those events. Now, we're gonna talk about a few things more on this panel. Your living room and kitchen lights are controlled here. You'll see an arctic button. We do not use that. That's for winter. Water pump button. Hot water. You can heat on electric at the campground 
or you could heat on propane gas if you're not allowed to run your generator or if you do not have electrical hookup. Now, when you go into a campground, folks, we want to make sure that you have hot water the whole time you're plugged in. So once you plug in, you've checked your microwave light for the dots, you're going to put the hot water heater on and you're going to leave it on. It takes about 10 minutes to heat the first time. It's good the whole time you're there. It's going to turn on and off by itself. You want to shut this down, though, when you start to get ready to depart the campground. This way, your hot water heater is off. The um, gauges are here. They're listed. If you notice, the first one is gray. That's dirty sink and shower water. Black is the second button. That's your toilet and your bathroom sink. Fresh water tells you how much water you have in capacity while traveling in that tank. Battery always shows full or two-thirds and your propane always shows about two-thirds or full depending on um, what's in there. Appliances, let's go there. Refrigerator set on automatic. I pre-chill it before you pick it up. This type of refrigerator takes about six hours to cool. So you'll see an auto light lit. That means it runs on propane or electric, whichever it's sensing. So if the generator's on or you're plugged in, she switches to the electric side. As soon as you cut that type of source, she relights on propane. So there's never a cooling issue. She's always cooling. You do want to make sure that your motorhome is sitting flat, especially when you go home. You, the motorhome refrigerator will not stay cold properly if your nose down or your back end is down. You want to try to keep her as flat as you can. Slight incline's not going to um, matter either way, but you don't want any kind of major inclines. If your driveway is a major incline and you find your refrigerator is warming up, that's because of the incline, so just try to straighten her out. Um, you'll notice in your refrigerator, there's fins in the back. That's your cooling fins. You want to make sure you don't overpack those fins so that they have air circulation. This tab right here with the wire controls how cold it is. The higher you put that wire with that clip, the colder it gets. So that's your temperature adjustment in your refrigerator. The next thing I want to talk about is your microwave. You're going to see this microwave. It looks like a home microwave. We don't use the microwave and the air conditioner together, whether we're plugged in or we're on the generator. It's too much of a power surge and it's gonna start popping breakers. So make a habit, shut off the air in the bedroom before you use the microwave and then you can put that back on. The same thing is gonna happen uh, using a blow dryer in the bathroom. So if you're gonna use a blow dryer, try to make sure that your air conditioning is off so that you can use the blow dryer without popping breakers. If it pops, it's going to be one of two things that tripped. The GFI in the bathroom where you had the uh, blow dryer plugged into, just reset that. Or you'll notice that at the base of the bed, that is your fuse panel and your breaker panel. Blade fuses are in the glove box. It's very rare that you blow a fuse. Breakers are in there. They're a simple reset like at home. So you'll see them tripped. Just reset it and try to make sure that you don't repeat the same thing that you just did. Your oven, you got, you got a light switch, a fan switch. This is glass. Make sure we lift the glass before we light it. It is propane. If you do not do that, you will shatter the glass. You'll notice a sparker here that's in different directions. If you turn the knob on to your burner and she gives you a problem where she doesn't light, sometimes the filament gets a little dull, use a barbecue lighter. You'll notice on these little, um, on these little switches, knobs, it's highlighted on which burner it controls. Now a motorhome oven. Motorhome oven you want to turn it to pilot on. You're going to notice that there is a pilot way in the back of this oven. You want to use your barbecue lighter guys. So you're going to push this in and light it at the same time. If this knob is not held in, she's not going to release gas. Before you close the glass, let the stove top cool a little bit so that we don't have any issues with any shattering. DVD is 12 volts, so the kids can be seat belted in, they could be watching a movie while you drive without the generator on. So simply turn on your television, you'll notice your remote bag here, find the remote that matches the name of the TV. You're going to turn on your stereo DVD, it is Bluetooth, so you may want to go to a woman, like a woman. You may want to go to uh, YouTube, look up Jensen Radio, find it, and they'll show you how to pair it. A speakers is inside, B speakers works the speakers outside, C speakers doesn't, um, it's a dummy switch. So simply load your DVD in here, put it on here, you're going to hit the mode. 
to HDMI arc once it's in and that should connect you to your speaker system. When you're done, just simply shut it off. If you have direct TV, not all 32s have direct TV, but if you open the hatch, you'll see the direct TV receiver. I will be sending you a separate video on how to do that function and also a separate video on how to scan your televisions for high def antenna. So this way you can just go right to that video without watching this particular video. Okay, so let's look at a few more things. Up under the cabinet, you'll see a green light glowing. That's HDMI, those charge your phone. They're always on, you do not need the generator on for that. You'll notice that there is a TV in the middle of the vehicle. DVD either from here, or if it's side fed like this one, it works like at home. That's for this section. You'll notice a TV in the bedroom. If you grab the, the cabinet by the handle, folks, it's loaded in here and there's also extra storage in the back. You've got your light switches here, slide out room button for this room. Your bunk beds and your armoire all move in and out together. Again, nobody's sitting on the furniture. Make sure the generator's on or make sure that you're plugged in. And you're gonna simply just hit in. As you notice, she moves in and out. So you wanna make sure anytime using a slide out room, you make sure she's open completely. There is a gasket system around these rooms and you want to make sure that the gasket is is closed properly in case you get some rain. Okay, so let's go to your air conditioning. If you notice this type of a thermostat, it's on and off mode. This is the button that you use to control the settings. They're pretty simple. The first one is fan. When it's hot and humid during the day, guys, put it on hot. When you sleep at night, Put it on auto. The next one is cool for air conditioning. Furnace works the hot air through the floor. Heat pump on this particular motorhome, if it has one, blows hot air through the air conditioning vents. We don't really use that that much. It's um, not that efficient. And you want to make sure that you click this till the screen is blank. This light will stay illuminated to show it's powered up. But you want a blank screen here before you shut off my generator or you unplug at the campground. If for some reason you forget, then it happens. And you have the generator on and the air conditioning's on and you're all excited to get into the campground and all you do is you shut your generator down and you don't shut this down. Well, this module will stay active, which means that when you go to plug in at the campground, it's gonna backfeed and it's not gonna work. It's gonna pop a breaker. So what you need to do, it's very simple, you're going to come back in, you're going to shut this down so there's nothing in the screen, and you're going to go to the post that you're plugged into at the campground. Reset the breaker. Even if the breaker looks like it didn't trip, reset it anyway. If that's not your problem, then you'll find your breakers in here, and you'll reset your breaker in here. And try not to do that again, because of course, that kind of puts certain strain in on these appliances. Let's talk about beds. Really, really simple. This cushion fits in here. It's got a board built into it for stability. 440 pounds over this opening, if any adults are going to be up there. So this cushion simply fits into this slot. This is where your ladder is stored, folks. We don't climb up and down with the kids here. It's just storage. You bring your ladder out for the kids. Clip it in here. The kids go up and down like a bunk bed. So when you're done, make sure you put the ladder back where it belongs. If your motorhome has a safety net, not all do, but if it does, it clips in here on both sides and adjusts like a seatbelt. And this way the kids have a little bit more security in the nighttime if they're uh, rolling around there. Ladder goes back in. Make sure that we're buttoning it in place so that she's in place and not moving around. This goes way back to back. No laying up here while in motion. Not safe. Kids must be in their proper seatbelts and we leave this just for sleeping. TV, if you notice, has a, um, an adjustment knob on the top. Sometimes it has a top and a bottom. You're gonna loosen that, pull your TV forward and lock it in so it's not flying around when you're traveling. Under these little lids, you'll find little outlets for the kids' iPads and whatever else they wanna plug in if they wanna bring in a little um, fan for at nighttime. Cup holders so we keep everything in place. Um, all of your windows, have pull down shades. 
So you can adjust those when you need to. Front and back. Privacy curtain. Has Velcro. Velcro tabs here. It's going to hang down in the front, closing off any view from the campground, wherever you are. Just sofa. You lift up from here and pull it down flat. You do not lift from this here. If you want extra storage on this motorhome, which is very cool, take this off and you can put cases of water, soda, and things up underneath, or maybe some storage bins with the kids' shoes or extra shorts and shirts. And then you stick this back up here like that. Now, in this motorhome, you'll notice there's end panels. These ends come off so that if, you're, if your kids are very tall and they don't want their feet elevated, you could take these off. And then, of course, when you put everything back together, you'll slide it back in. And that happens on both sides. Your dinette table, very simple. If you look on your dinette table, you have an unlocking locking latch. You're going to lift these cushions up or take them off. You'll unlock it, you'll lower it on a piston on this little ledge, and you're going to use these backer cushions like a puzzle. That makes a bed. Just remember, lock that in when it comes back up. Last but not least, you got the bed in the back, which is a Serta. It's a queen, two inches shorter than your home queen, but your sheets will work just fine. This, you have another sofa, sleeper under here. Also, you, you know, just push it up, and you got a twin bed. So, let's talk about sheets. Twin, use queen flats here and on the rest of those beds. They're odd sizes, you're not gonna get an elastic that fits. The only one that's gonna have an elastic that fits is back here. So that's your sleeping. Now, seat belts. On this particular motorhome, you got a couple seat belts under this couch. You have seat belts on that couch, and you have two seat belts on the dinette table. So you want to make sure seven and under, child seat, booster seat, New York State law. And if they want to get up to go to the bathroom, of course, use good judgment. Okay, so now let's go back into the front. And you'll notice that down here you have cabinets, just cabinet space. This is a battery disconnect, don't touch that. This is your awning in and out. Awning will not um, extend if the engine is on so you want to make sure the engine's off I'm when you put my awning out folks listen to what I'm saying roll it in at night when you go to bed it's so easy to do and it's gonna save you a lot of money because if you're sleeping and you get a storm downpour wind it'll rip it right off it's like an open canopy so you want to make sure you bring the awning in before you go to bed if you're at the beach for the day you're going down to the water and the motorhomes, it's beautifully sunny out. I've seen it. Go down to the water and all of a sudden we get a storm that rolls in and you, somebody can't make it back in time to put that awning up. Always put the awning in unattended. And the most important is don't drive with the awning out. I've seen that. So what you want to do is you want to make sure whether it's driver or co-pilot, somebody's in charge before you put that motorhome in drive, they do a walk around the whole motorhome. They check to make sure the awning is in. They make sure the extension line is unplugged. They make sure that nobody left their bikes out, barbecues out, whatever. Because with all the confusion sometimes of getting packed up and leaving, nine out of 10, somebody's leaving something out. And the worst part of it is, as I've seen awnings, where you think everything's set, you pull out, and you find out you just ripped your awning out off the uh, tree on the way out the campsite and it's extremely expensive and you don't want to put a damper on your trip so make it your business everybody in and somebody does your walk around it'll save you a lot of money you'll see red lights one um one is your leds on the outside and one is your porch light enjoy those while you're using it make a habit of shutting those off before bed your neighbor doesn't want leds in his you know, bedroom window and I don't blame him. You'll notice we got fire extinguisher here. We got carbon monoxide and propane detectors down by the base of the kitchen cabinet under the drawer. And you also have a smoke detector usually in the center of the living space. So we make sure that when you go out, you have all the safety precautionary measures. Everybody's safe. The generator on a motorhome has got the muffler outside, not like a boat where it's under the floorboard. So you can run the generator at night if you need to for air conditioning, if you don't have a plug-in source. 
just don't leave your windows open. So you want to make sure your windows are closed. We don't want any of that um, fumes to come in the coach from the open window. Okay, you'll notice that some of the coaches have a fantastic fan. It looks like this. Not all of them do. But if you're the lucky one that has one, this is an exhaust fan. It takes the heat out of the room without running your air conditioning. So say you're heading out on your trip and it's not that hot, but you want like a little fan. All you do is pull this knob down and you twist her open and you'll notice a fan on and off and a speed one to four. Leave that on, it's completely 12 volt. You do not need a generator to run that. Just make sure that you shut her down and you close the lid before you put air conditioning on because that's going to escape like an open window. Um, and again, this you can use while you're traveling and when you stopped, it really does not matter. Then the, your privacy curtains are all over the place, so this will close off your spaces for privacy for the kids, whoever's laying up there. And the same thing on those back bunks. You do have a pocket door in the bathroom, near the bathroom, right here, that you unlatch and then you can close off this particular space. At the base of your bed, on each side, is a 110 outlet and also um, ports for your phone. So if you find that you need to plug in something such as a um, CPAP machine or whatever, your um, ports are there right by the side of your nightstand, which is nice. Okay, let's talk about plumbing. We're almost done, folks. Plumbing. You'll notice that there's a water pump switch on a motorhome. And what does that mean? Well, you have a storage tank on board, like a boat. It holds about 50 gallons or so. You're driving along, the kids want to use the bathroom. Well, they can use the bathroom when you're driving. Just put the water pump on. You're going to use the bathroom. You'll just turn on your faucet to flush your toilet. When you're done, shut this off. Do not leave it on. Why? It's easy. If you run out of water in your water tank, and this is on, you're going to burn up the water pump. And then you won't have the ability of using that function. So always in a motorhome, use it, shut it off. Now, how do we know how much water we have, Suzanne? Well, I want to show you something about these gauges, and it can sound a little silly. In this particular model, they put the raised buttons and the words so closely together that you could easily misread it. I get phone calls all the time that they're thinking their toilet's full, meanwhile they're pressing the fresh button by accident. So let's talk to ourselves quietly so that they don't think that we're nuts. Gray is the first one. So you go gray, black, fresh. So one, two, three. Those three buttons is the buttons you're going to be using the most. The fresh tank has got about 50 or so more gallons. It'll tell you by highlighting the lights on how much water you have. You wanna make a habit of it. If you're at a campground, check that before you leave because you have a water tap. So you might as well just fill up your tank before you go to the next location. This way you have enough water. Water is filtered, but we're not gonna drink and ingest any large amounts of water out of any motorhome tank. The motorhome um, does have that filtration system. But trust me, guys, you want to use bottled water. The water coming out of your faucets are good for cooking because you're heating it. They're good in the shower if you, if you get a little down your throat and also good for brushing teeth. But we don't want to give the kids large glasses of water from different states because we don't really know what the grade of water is that they have and how they filter it. So let's stick to bottled water. And that's why there's plenty of storage up underneath the sofa for extra cases of water. All right, let's go to the bathroom. We're almost there. So if we go in the bathroom, you'll notice that you got a kitchen sink. It's similar to um, your home sink, hot and cold. Shower also, hot and cold. You'll notice that this has a sliding door. Well, we don't want this sliding back and forth when you're driving. We want to lock it in with this little tab. Make sure somebody's in charge of locking it in with this tab so she's not banging back and forth because it'll come off the track or you could break the doors. Your shower and your sink and your toilet are going to run off that pump when you're traveling or when you're hooked up obviously to a garden hose. Your toilet is a simple bottom flush on the pedal and this little sprayer that you see, this is just to clean the toilet out if you have this, not all of them have this. In order to activate this sprayer, you have to press the pedal down at the same time and she sends the water through the hose. Now let's talk about toilet clogs. 
You want to watch the toilet paper, guys. Not a lot of toilet paper, no face makeup wipes, and no paper towels. Um, there's toilet chemicals in the toilet tank. I've already um, put one down there, and I've given you extras. So when we go outside and discuss that, you're going to see under your bathroom sink that little pouches. So when we get to emptying out the toilet tank, and I tell you to put a pouch in, this is where you're coming. You're going to take one of these out. These pouches are in dissolved plastic, so you don't have to open the blue substance. Just drop this down the toilet bowl. It will dissolve, and it eats the paper and aids in um, deodorizing. So, toilet clogs. Let's go back there. So now, I've gotten phone calls. Oh, Johnny clogged the toilet. He used all kinds of toilet paper. Number one, to try to eliminate that, put a garbage pail in here with a bag. Number two, use single ply toilet paper only. RV grade toilet paper, which you can get at any marine store, or RV store, Scott's toilet paper, Kirkland, anything that's single ply. We don't want to use Charmin, even though it's nice and soft and fluffy. That's not for a motorhome toilet. Um, if for some re reason you clog the toilet, I have put a 12 inch rubber um, garden hose cut off in your um, compartment. That you use to just poke it, whatever it is, down into the tank. The toilet goes right down into a straight pipe into the tank so there's no curves and you don't want to use a plunger. A plunger will not work in a motorhome. So look for the hose. You simply put your pedal, put on the pedal, stick it down there. We use a garden hose because it wiggles and it's also pliable where it's soft so it's not going to crack if it's a porcelain toilet or plastic. And then simply rinse that out and make sure you put it in a spot where you know where it is. So that's how we do a clogged toilet. We're almost ready to go. We're getting close. Ford key goes in, start her up. This is your air conditioning. Most of you have cars and trucks that have this on a Ford. Charging, charging. This is your radio, okay? She's queuing up, see the red? So she's gonna come on. You have, your cruise control is in the, in the steering wheel. Your Ford manual is in the glove box. In this particular coach, your camera is here. Rear and side cameras, which is nice. Anytime you're backing into a campground, folks, don't trust the camera. Send some real eyes outside. There could be some low-lying branches. There could be a basketball net at Aunt Kelly's. You want to make sure that you don't ruin your trip by an oops that's going to cost some money. So always check and double check. Have somebody out there looking. Okay? So... I'm gonna press the knob if it's not coming on, and she's gonna queue up. I'm gonna shut this off if you don't wanna watch it. And once she comes on, um, in order to connect your phone to this radio on Bluetooth, the emergency brake must be pushed down in order to engage the Bluetooth a function. It wants to make sure that you're not in driving motion by your taking your eyes off the road. So once we get that, you'll hit menu you'll find your Bluetooth setting. You wanna go on your phone and shut your Wi-Fi off and put on your Bluetooth. Once you put on your Bluetooth, you hit this, she will come up. This particular one has somebody's phone in it, so if there's too many phones, you just wanna go and you just wanna hit empty on the garbage pail. She'll come up on your phone for pairing. It'll come up on here for pairing. Pair it on both. Your contacts will then go over to the radio while you're in the vehicle. Once you leave me, guys, I don't have your contacts. It's got to be connected with your phone. Um, so that's how you do it. Left and right mirrors are for the top mirrors. If you find that the top mirrors are sticking a little bit, then you could pull it in just to adjust. Hit it from end to end and you can move it just gently. This switch up here is for heated glass. That's more for the winter time. And that's your microphone for your radio. So there you have it folks. This is all equipped like you're used to, but those are a few other functions that I wanted to bring to your attention. Now remember what I'm saying. Before you put this in drive, you'll be lucky I'm telling you this. Somebody do your walk around. Okay? Want to make sure everything's good. So when you put that in drive, the kids are in their seatbelts, all your stuff is in your camper, the kids are in the camper, and then you want to hit the road. So Hopefully this has helped you on the inside. Now we're gonna go on the outside and then you're gonna go have some fun. Okay, folks, we're almost done. Let's do the outside, shouldn't take us that long. This key is a round key. 
that fits this lock. You'll see lock and unlock icons here. This is your deadbolt here. Not everybody uses that. It's up to you. Your silver keys I've provided you unlocked your compartments outside, anything with a key lock. You want to make sure you make a habit of it. Lock your compartments, guys, before you travel so that A, they don't jiggle open from bumps and open up and your stuff falls out. And also you don't um, be a temptation to somebody that you're at a rest area, you're in having a cinnamon bun, which I probably would be doing, and somebody's out in your compartment rummaging real quick. So keep everything locked. If you notice this compartment, guys, on this coach, really bad, bad design. This door opens where it's got no ground clearance. You wanna make sure the door you remember to lock is this one. If you do not, you go over a bump, she may jiggle open, you will rip that door right off and it gets expensive. So make sure that you got that. If you notice on this motorhome, there is like a tire valve. That's um, more ride, so it's, it's an air ride system. That stiffen, stiffens up your ride. So if you're taking this size motorhome for a long trip, Every so often you want to roll into a uh, tire guy, have him check your air pressures all the way around. And that gauge should read about 40 to 50 pounds. It loses air from time to time. So if you have a little air compressor you want to bring with you on a long trip, just in a gauge, just make sure she's at about 50 pounds. That'll give you a little bit more of a stiffer ride. Okay, on this side, you got your propane fill. So if you're taking a very long trip, you find a propane guy, you pull in, he fills it up simply, that's where you go. Your TV on the outside, make sure you lock this. Some have DVDs and radios, some do not. So you will just go to the video on how to do a, um, a scan or direct TV, and it'll give you all that information that you need. The TV out here, if you have direct TV on the inside, is TV input and channel three. Make sure you lock that. Outlets are out here if we wanna plug something in. This is a storage bin. This goes straight through to the other side. So you can bring chairs and rugs and fishing poles and golf clubs, all that fun stuff. We got a hitch lock here. If you want to rent bike, $65, gotta let me know ahead of time. If you want to bring a bike rack, bring your bike rack at day of pickup because that lock is locked and you're not gonna get it off once you go home. The ladders are modified, absolutely no roof access. It's not for sitting, it's not for sunbathing, it's not putting kayaks on the roof. This is, we wanna keep the kids off the roof and anybody drinking. So we modify the ladder to make sure that your safety is ensured. Okay, this compartment is a larger compartment. It's got room for like a cooler, it also goes straight through the other side. Electric, let's talk about that. This is your hatch, it says 30 amp. You wanna use 30 amp at a campground. If there's a campground that you must have and it's 50, let me know and I will give you a adapter pigtail that goes from 30 to 50. Try to get 30 though. So this cord is gonna be in your compartment. I give this to you. You're gonna simply stick it in, turn her, and lock in the band. At the end of this cord, I plug it in here for your uh, refrigerator. So if you go home and you're not leaving right away, you wanna run a house extension cord to the adapter I give you, 110. You do not, under any circumstances, run roof air conditioning off this cord. It's strictly just to put your battery charging for your lights and also put your fridge back on electric. Once you unplug from home, leave it at home. You wanna bring this cord with you. At the campground, 30 amp is what you're plugging into the post. This pigtail just goes into your compartment. All right, next thing, water hookup. Well, I put labels, so that makes it a little easy, right? So connect the garden hose here. I supply you with a garden hose. They're all in different shapes and forms, but they look similar to this. A water regulator looks like this. So you're gonna put your water regulator on here when you get to the campground. You're gonna, put, you're gonna screw it in, and then your garden hose, this attaches to the spout, and this attaches to your regulator. Why do we use a regulator? Motorhome plumbing can withstand 60 PSI worth of pressure before it starts to loosen connections and we don't need leaks. 
So every campground in different states, they random. They're 100, they're 70. So to put this on, you always know that you're protecting the plumbing. Now, if you find that you have this on, and I've seen this, and you turn on the water and you have not, it's dripping on the inside. Well, the next thing you're gonna do, that tells you that their water pressure is extremely low and you're also trying to reduce it to 60. So in that particular case only, will you take this off and run it in directly, okay, if you find that that's a problem. Don't forget to put these things back into your compartment. Now, I wanna point out another thing. You see how this one looks like that one? This is a sewer flush. You're not hooking up your garden hose to here, folks. You're not gonna get water. You're actually gonna fill up your toilet tank. So make sure we're paying attention to the labels and we're plugging it into the right spot. Filling my water tank here, very simply. Remember when I told you inside about the fresh water button um, for the sinks while you're traveling? That water is in here, not here. This is direct. This is filling a portable tank. So you wanna take your hose off the spout off the uh, motor home at the campground. You want to put this on. You want to fill this up before you leave if she needs to be filled. You're going to go to the fresh water button, third one down, count it, and see what your water level is. Just top it off. It's going to overflow. If you walk away, that's fine. Just put your cap on and put your fill hose back in to your compartment. Okay, sewer, last but not least, I'm going to clip that open. You got a sewer hose, guys. This goes into their septic, really simple. Goes into a hole that they provide. You got two handles. One's gray, one's toilet. Gray is dirty sink and shower. Toilet is obviously toilet, it's the black. So at the campground, if you're staying overnight or several days, you'll pull the gray valve open and leave it open. This way, anything flowing down the shower or the sink goes right into their septic so that there's no level on your gray valve on your gray tank. Toilet we keep closed until we check the black button on the panel. If we check the black button and it says two thirds to full, somebody's coming out, you're gonna pull that valve open, it's gonna dump your septic, it's not like the RV movie, it's not gonna spray up like a fountain, it's just simply gonna be gravity drop. It's gonna go down the hose, and when you're done, close it. You're gonna go inside, remember the blue pouches? You're gonna put a pouch down the toilet bowl so that we have no stinkies and it eats the paper for the new tank you're using. Now, the night before you leave the campground, suggestion, come out, close your grave out. This way it accumulates some shower and sink water for the morning for a final dump. Final dump, you're gonna come out, you're gonna pull the toilet one first. When she's done wiggling, you're gonna close it, pull the grater, rinse the hose out, and that's how we do it in the RV industry. Now, what happens if we're just dumping and we're not hooking up at a campground? The procedure is this. Hose in, the, in, the, in their septic, pull the toilet one first, wait for her to done wiggling, close it, pull the grater, rinse the hose out, close it, put your hose back in, and throw a tablet down the toilet. That's how we dump a motorhome toilet, really simple. If you see a sponge donut that I give you on these models, some campgrounds want you to open this up and put this end into the donut on top of their septic hole. That stops any type of vapors from coming up if there's a space. So they're in here. Gloves, blocks, just in case you want to put blocks under your tires. Just because they're in there doesn't mean that you have to use them. Okay, and you'll notice also on this side, your other airbag valve is here for the driver's side. Remember we said 40 to 50 pounds. Okay, there you have it folks. Looks like we've covered most of the stuff. If there's anything else in my binder, cell phone, office number, or just go back to the video on your index. That's why you're taking me with you and I don't even need a bed. So all is well, go camping, have fun, make memories, and catch you next time. And bring me back some good stories.